There's a psychological theory introduced by Swiss psychologist John Piglet. He suggests that a major benchmark in developmental psychology is the concept of object permanence. Around the end of the sensory motor stage of development, children develop the understanding that objects continue to exist even when they cannot be perceived. This isn't only a major milestone in childhood development, but in development as a writer as well. Now to illustrate this point, we'll continue with Star Wars Episode 1, because I like talking about Star Wars Episode 1. <laughs> Uh, we're looking at three types of characters. We've got main characters, they consistently appear throughout a story. We've got throwaway characters, they just show up for a purpose and are pretty quickly discarded. And then we've got the most important category, the permanent objects. These characters return briefly throughout a story and at best have consequences for the story beyond just passing the baton to the main characters and also have an impact on the main characters in a meaningful way, but at least have some kind of role as the story continues. The permanent objects are really the foundation of a story, and the more distinct they are from the main characters, the better. Okay, so for our purposes here, we are only looking at characters with a speaking part in the first 15 minutes of Star Wars Episode 1 and Star Wars Episode 7. We excluded obvious background characters just shouting something and empty action characters like the droid army or stormtroopers. Within the first 15 minutes of Star Wars Episode 1, there are a total of 16 characters. Six are main characters, three are throwaway characters, and seven are permanent objects. Again, permanent objects are the foundation of the world because they create a sense of continuity and believability in the world. Now I'm terrible with names, but I'm going to do my best. This is Lance Bass. He shows up again at the end and has a significant role. This is Carlton Albatross, he shows up again at the end and has a significant role. This is What's Wrong With Your Face, and he or she shows up again. This is Joseph Cotton, he gets to hold the science fair static ball at the end. This is Captain Hacksaw, he gets to do some fighting at the end. This is Questionable Stereotype, and he gets to be a general at the end. This is Froggy, and he gets unzipped at the end. By contrast, the throwaway characters just show up and disappear having done their part. Within the first 15 minutes of Star Wars Episode 7, there are 10 characters. Six are main characters, and four or throwaway characters. Now if you do basic math, you guessed it, there are no permanent objects. Joseph Cotton dies at the beginning, Boltface disappears, Slugman shows up later as part of the same sequence but disappears for the rest of the movie. Guy who actually had claimed to BB-8 just disappears into the sunset, never to be seen again. When you're watching a movie like Star Wars Episode 7 for the first and often only time, people don't tend to realize that this matters. It's usually later when you realize there isn't much to grab onto, that something felt empty, that you didn't want to obsess over theories and ideas and imagine how far that world could go. Now we're going to continue on a path to Rise of Skywalker where I'll do a more complete review. I know at the current pace it's like watching a paraplegic turtle. I just really think it's valuable to slow down and take a close look. I'll do more conventional reviews at some point. I just feel like I'm through the looking glass on this Star Wars business. Thank you everyone who's shown support by sharing or liking or commenting. Any engagement helps a lot and I'll see you in the next one.